So, let's draw our conclusion after all this, and then we'll now see what is being said here. Number one, when tithe is mentioned in the New Testament, it is always in relation to natural Israel. Never spiritual Israel. Never. It has never been mentioned in relation to spirit. So when we mentioned, when we saw in the Gospels, the three places where the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned the issue of tithe, it was in relation to natural Israel, the Pharisees particularly. When we, see, when we saw the writer of Hebrews mentioning the issue of tithe in Hebrews chapter 7, which we just read chapter 7, verse, um, I think it's verse 5, 6, 8, and 9. Again, it was in relation to natural Israel, not spiritual Israel. And don't forget, Hebrews was written to the, the Jews who had become Christians and was actually telling them that all that has been taken away, that there is a new covenant in place, a new testament in place. Because the old one did not help them. The old one did not bring salvation to anybody. The killing of goats and animals brought salvation to no one. He didn't change them. So God brought a new, a new covenant and put that in place. And under that new covenant, we have Christ who supersedes everyone, including the, 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 uh, the Aaronic uh, priesthood. Secondly, nowhere in the New Testament is it mentioned as a command to Christians to tithe. Nowhere in the New Testament is it ever mentioned as a commandment to uh, New Testament Christians to tithe. Nowhere. Thirdly, nowhere in the is tithe even mentioned as an obligation by Christians. It's not mentioned. Uh, let's, let's go to Acts chapter 15, when they, they had this uh, meeting uh, about dealing with issues in the church, about what, what, what and what the church should be doing. You know, remember that time when some people went to Paul and, 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 and when they went to where uh, Paul and Barnabas had been preaching and they began to say that except you are circumcised, you cannot be truly saved, that salvation is not by faith, you also need to be circumcised and so on and so forth. The problem was caused by people who came from Jerusalem. So they took the problem back to Jerusalem and said, we need to solve this problem. You guys, you need to solve problem. People from your own place have started going all over the place. So a council met and they began to speak about how to deal with these issues. Eventually, they came up and said, we are going to send a letter to them. That letter will, will summarize what is expected of them as believers. Let's read that letter. I'll just read two verses there. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me know. Let me read a little longer. Okay, let me read from verse 23. Acts 15 from verse 23. It says, They wrote this letter by them, the apostles, the elders, and the brethren, to the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words, unsettling your soul, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Men who have risked their lives for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. Verse 28 now. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Verse 29. That you abstain from things offered to idols from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. That was all. It, there was no mention of tithing. Even no mention of giving. Number four. 
the Lord Jesus Christ did not once, once require that his disciples pay tithe. Not once. Remember the occasion when they came and asked him, why are your disciples not fasting? Like the Pharisees fast and we, the disciples of John the Baptist, we also fast. He said the time will come when they will fast. Right now I'm with them so they can't fast. But nowhere did he say, you are, I'm with you now so don't tithe. When I go, tithe. It's not, it's not written there. Just like he never one day celebrated his birthday. Not once did the Lord Jesus Christ celebrate the birthday. Not once did he say to them, when I have gone, celebrate my birthday. Not once. But what are we doing today? We are celebrating birthday. That's what we are doing. We have brought in Christmas. But he said, celebrate my death. As often as you do this, you show that I died and resurrected and I'm coming back again. That was the essence. But we have turned communion into something else. It was to serve as a reminder because we always forget. And today we are forgetting because we are using communion as something else. We are using communion for healing and other things. We were, communion was something that we would gather together and commune together as, as believers with the Spirit of God and remind ourselves that Jesus is coming back. That he went. He died for our sins. He, raised, he was raised for our justification. And that he's returning again. But like mere mortals that we are, we continue to do things as we like. The Lord just never asked anybody to do that. But we are the ones doing it. And we keep doing it as we like. Every day we do whatever it is that we like. We come up with new, with new things and lay claim that they, somebody received a revelation. And I thank God Paul wrote in, 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 in Galatians chapter 1, says, if anybody comes and tells that they received a revelation, even if it's an angel, let that angel be accursed. So we need to be careful. Number five, none of the apostles required tithing or the tithes of any Christian. Not one. Not one of them. We didn't read in Acts that said, okay, 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 you know, this issue of um, our gathering money is not helping us. I think what we need to do now is basically, let's, let's put in place what, what they used to do under the old covenant. Let's start tithing. They didn't say that. Instead, they, 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 they let, let me read, let me read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 1 to 18. What Paul wrote, he writes, says, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen the Lord Jesus our Lord? The, the, have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, yet doubtless I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me is this. Do we have no right to eat and drink? Do we have no right to take along a believing wife? as do also the other apostles, the brothers of the Lord and Kephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working? Whoever goes to war at his own expense, who plants a vineyard and does not eat of its fruit, or who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk of the flock? Or do I say these, do I say these things as a mere man, or does not the law say the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the, the ground, out while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? Or does he say it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written that he who plows should plow in hope, and he who threshes in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? I want you to listen. Oh. If others are partakers of this right over you, are we not even more? Nevertheless, we have not used this right, but endure all things, lest we hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the things of the temple, and those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar? Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should leave from the gospel. But I have used none of these. 
but I have used none of these things, nor have I written these things, that it should be done so to me. For it would be better for me to die than that anyone should make my boasting void. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What is my reward then? That when I preach the gospel, I may present the gospel of Christ without charge. That I may not abuse my authority in the gospel. I read this long passage because I want to prove a point here. For as much as he speaks about taking care of uh, preachers and other things, he never once mentioned the issue of tithing. Not once. He mentioned the issue of receiving of your material things, yes, but he never mentioned it as a, as a matter of law, as a matter of command or tithe. No. So not one of the apostles mentioned the issue of tithe or tithing. That brings me to point number six as we conclude. Does that preclude or exonerate Christians from acting responsibly? No. Nobody is saying that you should not act responsibly and contribute to the upkeep of those who minister the gospel. It is, it is this issue of upkeep, maybe next week by the grace of God, when we look at some of the historical antecedents that may have given rise to this, we will see that a lot of people are acting irresponsibly. And because they're acting responsibly, men are trying to orchestrate a way by which they will force or compel people to be responsible. You have to be responsible. If indeed the Spirit of God is in you, it is expected that you will act responsibly. That is why we thought you are to give generously without anybody compelling you or cajoling you. You are to give bountifully as God has blessed you. You are to give cheerfully. You are to give purposefully. You should purpose in your heart. For example, you could purpose and say, Every month, I want to give a tenth to God. That is okay. It is not, it's, it's not like tithe, where you are forced, where you are compelled. No. It's your decision. I want to give God 20% of my income every month. Maybe as your income increases, you say, I want to give to God 30% or 40% or 50%. That is a personal. Nobody is forcing you. There is no law. That's the point we are trying to make here. But you must act responsibly. We also said you should give as God has blessed you. Not just financially. But as God has blessed you in other areas. You are to give to widows. To the fatherless. To strangers. To the needy. You are to give to ministers of the gospel. One does not expect you to now say, for example... Maybe at a time you were earning a particular amount, you were given a tenth. Later, as God increases you, you can say, ah, in fact, what I have now is so much, I can give 20%. I can give 30%. You are not under compulsion. It is your decision. It's between you and God. You do it anonymously. Nobody needs to know what you are doing. That's between you and God. You are not compelled in Scripture under the new covenant. To pay tithe. You are not. That's the simple truth. But you are also not exonerated from acting responsibly in meeting needs in the church. That is, of the, of, 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 of the body of Christians. You should meet the needs of the widows. You should meet the needs of the fatherless. You should meet the needs of those who, need, who have needs. You should meet the needs of ministers. I didn't say once. I said the needs, the essentials, the basic necessities. Not wants, not desires. Not what we desire to have an aircraft, so you go and buy aircraft. That's not what we're talking about. We are now no longer under law, but under grace. Under the law, you were compelled, you were commanded. Under grace, you are not compelled, you are not commanded. And recall, we had said, I think two weeks ago, that giving is said to be a grace of God. 
So if indeed you are under the grace of God, it is expected that you will give of your material substance to make sure that there is no lack in the church, to make sure that those who minister the gospel are taken care of. You don't have to wait for a pastor to beg you for money before you know that you should send something to the pastor. You don't have to wait for the pastor to spend six months teaching on something that is not scriptural like tithe before you give. It is because of this on our own unscriptural behavior that pastors are now bringing unscriptural methods to collect. But those things are wrong. If you're a Christian, sanctify. The Spirit of God is in you. You should know the right thing to do. That's the simple truth. You should know the right thing to do and do it. But we have a situation where people don't give. I've seen people where once they pay their tithe, they believe they are because they see it as, oh, I've, I've, done, I've done what is right, what I'm supposed to do. That's it. Then they start giving 50 naira, 100 naira, 500 naira as offering. They say, I've, I've given tithe. It is this kind of teaching that has turned us into selfish people. It's this kind of teaching that has shut our hearts from the needs of others. We have come, we have not realized that there are needs that, and we are meant to meet those, we are obligated to meet those needs. This is not and should not be controversial. That is tithing and tithe. This should, is not and should never be a matter of controversy. It is scripture we are talking about here. There's nothing to do with controversy. The Bible does, the new, the, under the New Testament, we are not told to tithe. It's simple. If you choose that you want to keep giving 10%, nobody can stop you from doing it. Do it. But recognize that it is a free, it's a free will. If you, don't, if you don't tithe, as it's been taught now, it, it, heaven and hell has nothing to do with that. Like the Bible tells us, like we saw in, in Hebrews. It says, this all this... All these ordinances of tithing, of giving, all these ordinances of, 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 of um, sheep, killing sheep. and He wasn't able to save them. That if it were, God would never have brought a new one. But God brought a new covenant and in bringing a new covenant, he cancelled everything about the old. Therefore, I submit to us that... Tithing and tithe has no place in the New Testament church. However, the New Testament Christian is under obligation, not command now, under obligation to meet needs in the New Testament church as we saw in Acts chapter 4. You are, ob you are obligated to do that. Whether it is 50%, or 90% you want to give, as God has blessed you, that's your business. You don't even have to show off on it. 